kysytään vielä. Hi, can you hear the voice? Hopefully. Still testing. Excellent. Great. Okay, let's begin. Um, welcome to this uh, master's degree program in computing sciences at Tampere University webinar, where we attempt to answer the questions that might be uh, might be in the heads of the future applicants. My name is Heikki Huttunen. I'm a professor in the university. I'm uh, studying machine learning or more modern word artificial intelligence, also teaching large courses on, <clears throat> on that topic. And I'm also the head of the computing sciences master's degree program. With me, I have two coordinators. Please. Hi, I'm Anna Mari Vitala. I'm coordinating the degree programs in engineering side. And here's my colleague. My name is Kirsi Tuominen, and I have uh, programs uh, which are in the master's master of science programs, not in engineering. <laughs> we have a set of slides in here where we describe what Tampere University is all about, what uh, the master's degree program is all about, some details about our uh, our different modules and tracks within the program. And after that, there is time for your questions via the chat, if you have any. So let's begin with the slide set. <coughs> um, and uh, <coughs> for those of you who are not familiar with the Finnish education system, it's uh, well known for, for its successes in, in the PISA evaluation, but also the universities are are well renowned in, in certain areas and uh, <clears throat> there is a number of universities all together in Finland and uh, this slide is highlighting the big ones who are the big ones. <clears throat> Tampere is one of the top three universities in terms of the number of students, degrees, staff, however you measure it we are among the top three universities and uh, <clears throat> this is due to a recent merger of two universities in Tampere. Still one year ago there were two universities in our city and uh, at the change of the year 2019, beginning of 2019, they were merged together to form a bigger entity and get uh, much benefit for the synergies between the two universities. And this also gives us better foot foothold in the Finnish education system and, uh, and has made uh, us uh, a significant player in, in the field. If we go to the next slide, <clears throat> uh, how, how we profile ourselves, especially in the computing sciences program. Uh, computing sciences in general is, is known for its connections to outside world. And this is something that we feel important. So the highlight of our, our information technology programs was 2015, when our university back then part of the current university, Tampere University of Technology at the time, was ranked 11th globally by Times Higher Education on the domain of uh, industry collaboration. Times Higher Education ranks universities in different, different aspects. There is research, there is teaching, and one of the aspects that, that is evaluated by the DHE is industry collaboration. And in this domain, we were number 11 not in Finland, not in Europe, but globally, number 11. This, is, this was a real big achieve, achievement, and this is, this is something that we are very proud of. And we plan to continue along this track, keeping the good contacts with uh, industry in the, in the nearby, and also <clears throat> matching our students to the needs of the companies. This is our desire as a university, so that our, our graduates would uh, get employed in the in the local companies and also in the in the outside world at the bottom of this picture there are some of the local companies Tampere is known for for its industry in intelligent machines there are big research units in these global companies that are listed at the bottom John Deere Sandvik uh, mining and construction drilling industry Kalmar is known or Cargotech and Kalmar are known for their uh, their cranes, the ports. Huawei is known for the phones and uh, and communication devices. And Nokia is is the big 
big uh, Finnish uh, communications engineering giant. And all these are just a part of our ecosystem. And uh, the collaboration between universities and industry is very tight. And uh, for example, on my course, uh, on, on pattern recognition and machine learning, I have on next, Tuesday, uh, next Thursday, two days from now, I have two visitors from companies visiting my, my course. One of the speakers is flying from Switzerland to Finland just to be able to talk to my students. So I think that not only we appreciate the companies, but also the companies appreciate our, our, our graduates. So that is the, maybe the highlight of, of our university. On the next slide, I think I'll give uh, the turn to Anna-Marie. Yes, Anna so I will then continue about the content of this webinar. So in this webinar, we want to shortly introduce you each study track in this new computing sciences master degree program and um, also give you an idea what kind of candidate is an ideal candidate in each of these tracks and also we want to remind you about the application procedures and also of course tell you about the scholarship programs most of all actually all of this information you can also find on our website so i recommend that you read really carefully our website and um, but this is sort of a introduction to everything you need to know <laughs> when you are about to apply so this uh, computing sciences is a new program. It officially it will start at the beginning of the year. So this is now the first application round for this program. Uh, the application round will start actually tomorrow and it will end in 15th of January next year. So the application period is rather short, but uh, if you start to prepare your application as soon as possible, you definitely will have enough time to prepare it so that we can then evaluate it. This program includes seven different tracks, uh, which have their roots in uh, degree programs in those two former universities, Tampere University and Tampere University of Technology. So this is not com completely new program or master degree program Similar kind of courses and tracks have been available before, but as this is now something new name and um, new structure, so of course we want to introduce you what is this new program then or what it is offering to you. Uh, each student uh, major in his or her, or her own track but the degree structure is such that you can rather freely choose elective studies, minor studies, etc. So even if you are, have been admitted to study some particular track, there is still room for free choices. So your degree can be uh, such that you think that is important and useful to yourself. Here you can see the seven different tracks this new program is offering, data science, human technology interaction, machine learning, software, web and cloud, and statistical data analytics. You can see, for example, human technology interaction and software, web and cloud. Uh, there are two different tracks for, to the same kind of uh, major, but what is the most important uh, or how these two tracks differ is the degree you will reach. For example, if you will uh, or if you apply and will be admitted to study the master's in human technology interaction, master of science in technology, the degree will be the degree you will complete is in the field of technology. So these uh, different degrees set certain uh, rules and requirements to applicants. So for example, if you are applying or would like to complete a degree in, in the field of technology, your bachelor degree must be from the field of technology in engineering or similar or close enough to the engineering. There will be certain differences between these tracks also in studies, but perhaps the most important difference, <coughs> difference is the prerequisite 
uh, or the previous decree you have? There is a the question from the audience, Jannat. Oh. <coughs> I'm from an electrical engineering background. Can I apply in data science program? It depends on the content of your bachelor degree in engineering, whether it includes certain kind of courses. Actually, we could then continue by checking these different tracks. Here we will give you a short introduction about the content of these tracks and then admission requirements and also tell what kind of ideal candidate would be certainly admitted to this track. So please. <laughs> so the data science MSc track, uh, this information is actually from the uh, website, the admission website, where you can find each uh, study track described and all the how to, under how to apply tab, you will find uh, information on, on, on admission requirements for each, each uh, track. So the idea behind the data science MSc track is that it teaches you to make sense of big data. So computational and statistical algorithms for data mining and machine learning, emphasizing algorithmic and computational aspects. And the peculiar thing about this, this data, data science track is that you, have, you must have a background uh, not only in computer science, statistics or mathematics, but you need to have a background uh, in, in, in both in computer science and statistics. So it's, it's not enough to have a background only in computer science. You also need a sufficient amount of studies in statistics and mathematics. So both, uh, both of these, these compu computer science and statistics and mathematics are needed. And uh, the professors let us know that the, an ideal candidate for, the, for this uh, track has interest in data analytics. So you, you can uh, tell about your interest when you write your motivation letter. And no, um, so a background in engineering is fine, but, uh, but actually no, no engineering degree is needed for, for this track. But you need to have that background in computer science, statistics and core mathematics. Maybe if I can mention here in between, if you go to the previous slide. So among the <clears throat> seven st study tracks, uh, there are kind of pairs or triplets that are closely associated to each other. So data science, the first one, machine learning, the fourth one, and statistical data analysis, the last one. They uh, study the same topics from different aspects, different points of view, and these are related. These are all data science programs but for, for different backgrounds and different uh, fo focal areas. Also, human technology interaction, there are two of these uh, with minor differences. And uh, the third uh, pair is the software web and cloud, where there's MSc version and MSc tech version. So in kind of, in a sense, now they are in a strange order, the first, fourth and seventh, because they mm -hmm. belong together. They are in alphabetical order. <laughs> okay, okay, alphabetical order now, I see. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Shall we move on to human technology interaction, MSc? So this is again, a uh, Master of Science uh, degree. No engineering degree is, is needed for this track, but uh, if you have a background in engineering, it's, it's okay to apply to, to this track. Uh, so this study track is something that offers an exciting multidisciplinary skill set and proficiency to work in creative and analytical, analytical tasks in the development of future interactive technologies and digital services. We get these, these from, from the professors. Um, admission requirements. This is something um, quite interesting from, from uh, for, for those who, who are not in computer science, because you don't need necessarily a background in computer science. Uh, you, it's okay that uh, they, you, you can have a, a bachelor's degree or equivalent in interactive technology or human computer interaction, computer science, or design, education, media studies, psychology, sociology, 
or other relevant field with studies in human-computer interaction. And an ideal candidate is someone who has studies in human-computer interaction, so human-computer interaction or, or user experience. But you, the, the difference between, between this track and, and the other tracks is that you, you, you can apply if you have a degree in, in for example, education or psychology. Uh, and the track appreciates any mix of the following, creative thinking, good communication skills, both orally and written, uh, group working skills, programming skills, electrical engineering skills, knowledge of statistical methods. But again, no engineering degree is needed for this track. We have a question, but should we answer now or? Uh, well, of course we can try to answer shortly. Um, well, the working experience... Uh, I'm not sure if the rest of the audience can see the question, so let me repeat. <clears throat> I'm currently working as a business analyst. Will it make any advantage for me to get admission? So does, does work experience count? Uh, it's not uh, compulsory, so it doesn't... It is okay to apply even without any working experience, of course, if the working experience is exactly from the field of the track you are applying to. So, of course, it supports you, but mostly we appreciate your academic skills, etc. So, it is okay and it might support you, but it's not compulsory part. You can apply even without any work experience. So, it's sort of a really depends what kind of work you have. The brief answer to the question, mm -hmm. can I apply, is I would say yes, yes. <clears throat> but then we, we make the selection mm -hmm. and uh, that is the difficult part. I have been reading the mm -hmm. applications myself mm -hmm. and that's always the difficult part because we get many applications from different countries where people have different bachelor programs, different work experiences, they are like comparing oranges to mm. apples. So we try to make as fair decision as possible and any, any uh, additional experience or skills is of course positive. Mm. I would say that uh, work experience on a related field is definitely a plus, mm. but yeah. it all depends on the complete application and not just an individual detail. Mm. Exactly. Uh, so then it's about the human technology interaction master of science in technology degree. So the content of this tract uh, is rather similar than in the previous one. There will be some courses more in engineering side or software engineering, but still um, the changes I guess will be rather minor, but the most important thing is that if you apply to this track, you need to have a bachelor degree in the field of engineering or similar kind of um, applicable field. So if you have a degree in um, psychology, for example, please do not apply to this track because a uh, degree in psychology is not... Uh, yeah, that's not enough. That's not yeah. enough. Yeah. But so you can, yeah, but you can apply to human technology interaction MSc. Track. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So, so therefore, we want to emphasize the bachelor degree or the field of your bachelor degree. So please check very carefully whether your bachelor degree fits to that track you are about to apply to. But um, this track um, offers you skills to apply different user interface styles and interaction techniques to different contexts of use and application domains, including mobile and unique, sorry, very difficult word to me to pronounce, but <laughs> computing. You may go with those. You may go with those. <laughs> yeah. So, but the admission requirements are, are such that you should have a bachelor degree or equivalent in computing, information technology, computer science, electrical engineering, for example, or other applicable field with proficiency in mathematics, 
physics and elementary programming skills. And as I said, the degree should be uh, from the field of engineering. The ideal candidate uh, has also studies in human technology interaction or user experience. They are not compulsory, but of course they are appreciated and support the candidate, but not compulsory. The separation between the MSCs and MSC tech degrees is maybe peculiar to Northern Europe, Germany, Sweden, Finland, mm -hmm. and maybe not so familiar in, outside this region, but the German tradition has a separate degree for diploma engineer. So mm. that's the MSc tech and that's why we kind of may seem as if we have double uh, these degrees two times. So, so do you want then to... about machine learning, do you want to say something about the machine learning track, what it offers? <laughs> Actually, you can of course read the text, but do you have some additional information you would like to? Yes, so apart from being the head of the computing science program, the seven degrees, uh, seven, seven tracks, I'm also heading the machine learning track where uh, we study machine learning, modern machine learning, which says prepares you for the most demanding jobs in IT, signal processing, mobile devices, artificial intelligence. And our machine learning has, uh, has its roots in signal processing. Signal processing research in Tampere has long tradition. It's well known. It's part of the part of the success of, of Nokia when they started to explode in the size of, of their company and making successful mobile phones. A lot of the technology stems from our unit signal processing. More recently, as signal processing has become more bulk in, in a sense, it's no longer that much of a of, uh, subject of an intensive study. At the moment, we have diverted our research toward artificial intelligence, machine learning, but also it is still tied to the classical topics, signal processing, image processing. So we are doing applied machine learning for signals, images, intelligent machines, things like that. Also the signal processing and image processing is uh, in our agenda and we have research groups that are successful in image denoising for example making pictures taken by a mobile camera appear brighter and better that is part of our agenda for example uh, algorithm implemented and discovered in our lab is now in use in every huawei phone it was announced in huawei keynote uh, two months ago and they specifically mentioned the algorithm that was designed in here um, regarding the admission requirements, the previous degree has to be in the same fields mentioned before. Information technology, computer science are the, the preferred ones. Electrical engineering as well, software engineering. These are all suitable fields uh, of background for, for, for this program. Um, strong programming skills are important. <clears throat> we are <clears throat> as software platforms evolve, we are slightly di diverting ourselves from the traditional mathematics background that is used in signal processing. It's very mathematical. Nowadays, maybe machine learning has become more software implementations oriented, although mathematics is still important. But I would stress now that strong programming skills are important. And uh, as a question there, speaking about machine learning applications, would you be interested in student working in research area related to ML application in cyber security? Um, and uh, GUN, generative adversarial networks and similar, or your main focus is in different AI directions. I would say that our particular focus is in applied AI, the focal area of the university's intelligent machines. We have strong collaboration and strong unit working in automation, intelligent machines also attached to our ecosystem of intelligent machine manufacturers. But also our research has some, some, some of these topics mentioned in here. We have a cybersecurity program as well. Program. 
there are several causes on cyber security, so I think this is related. Also, privacy is becoming an important issue in machine learning, so that in edge computing you could you could uh, detect all the faces in front of the camera at the edge and then send a encrypted representation of that to a server where it would be matched across across the history of of uh, people that are being monitored or, or something like that. So I think this is relevant. Research area related to ML application in cybersecurity is definitely relevant. We ha don't have that much background for now, but this is definitely in our agenda. We are planning to move, move to that direction. Okay, so let's continue with software web and cloud. Is this now the check? <laughs> Do, can, can we go just one one backwards? Oh, because, sorry. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So software web and cloud MSc, so Master of Science, not in technology but Master of Science. So this study track offers you a solid understanding in computer science and software engineering, the ability to design and implement large software systems, and the competence to manage and improve software development processes. Emphasizing the knowledge and skills in web and cloud. And the admission requirements, you must have a successfully completed Bachelor of Science um, in Computing, Computer Science, Software Engineering, Information Technology or other closely related field with proficiency in mathematics, programming, data structures and databases. So quite a lot of uh, variety there. An ideal candidate has studies in data structures and algorithms, databases, programming, software design and mathematics. And again, you, if you have a big background in engineering, you're, you're free to, 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 to apply, but no engineering degree is needed for this track. So now it's about this Master of Science in Technology degree in software, web and cloud. Perhaps I just... Uh, comment the ideal candidate because this is again the master of science in technology so the degree should be the bachelor degree should be uh, in the field of engineering or technology or as it's mentioned there admission requirements the previous degree has to be one of the followings computing computer science software engineering information techno technology or other closely related field with proficiency in mathematics, programming, data structures, databases, and physics. Uh, ideal candidate uh, has studies in data structures and algorithms, databases, programming. Programming skills are here very important. Intra introduction to software engineering, software design and mathematics, as mentioned before. The content will be quite similar with the previous one. There are only minor changes, so uh, I guess it's enough what my colleague just mentioned. Uh, there is now a question. Uh, I am currently completing master's studies at University of Eastern Finland and will support my application. However, I need to wait for the professors to report the grades when this period ends. Is there a secondary deadline for which all documents must be submitted or is it strictly January 15th? Uh, January 15th is the deadline you must uh, submit your application in this uh, Study <laughs> at, at studyinfo.fi. Yes, the, the online application. So yeah, your, your documents have to be submitted online. But actually, uh, the the paper application documents they they have a later deadline. We'll we'll go through those dates mm. uh, in a minute. Yeah. So it's not strictly. Uh, the. January 15th is a strict deadline. Yeah, for the online application. Online application. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you need to push put to, to press submit before the, the, the deadline. Mm -hmm. But please note that uh, if you are applying 
uh, for to a master's degree program and you are now completing the master's degree mm -hmm. it's 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 basically the bachelor's degree that that gives you eligibility to to a master's mm -hmm. degree program so we, we, we will be looking into, especially into the bachelor's degree uh, documents. Mm -hmm. There's another question, but should we go through this? Let's go, yeah. Let's go yeah. through this and we'll another final, final then get back so, to the questions. Yeah, yeah. In the end, we have two slides about Yeah, because this is, the, this is the last track. So this is the Statistical Data Analytics Master of Science. So this is the sister program, sister, sister track of the, the data science uh, and the machine learning tracks. And uh, the track teaches you to make sense of big data. So again, the, the same uh, content uh, in most cases as, as the data science track. Uh, in admission requirements, you must have a successfully completed bachelor's degree or equivalent in statistics, computer science, or mathematics, or in other, in other applicable field with enough studies in, in these, these uh, uh, fields. Uh, and it's important that the previous degree includes a sufficient amount of studies in statistics, and also a sufficient amount of studies in computer science and mathematics. Again, you must have a uh, two legs in, in your previous education, statistics and then computer science and mathematics. Uh, again, an ideal candidate, ha candidate has interest in data analytics and no engineering degree is required. But if you have an engineering degree and your degree complies with these requirements, then you are welcome to apply. But now let's continue with this. Oops. Uh, application process. So, yeah, I'm sure you have already uh, checked the, the TUNI admissions website. Um, you need to read the application information very, very carefully because all information is there. Uh, read it all. I think that's, that's a good starting point. And you have to realize that uh, as the application round opens tomorrow, all the requirements, all the application information is there and it stays put. So we can't change any uh, requirements anymore. So all the, re all the admission requirements now online were decided weeks and weeks and even months ago. So nothing can be changed at this point anymore. So th those, those requirements stay, stay there and no except, exceptions can be made to the requirements. So the requirements apply to all uh, applicants. So the application round starts tomorrow and closes on the 15th of January at, at 15.00 GMT plus two. So in the, af so in the afternoon in, in, in Finnish time. Uh, and uh, the application form is online. Of course, there's a link from, from the uh, uh, Tampere University admissions website to this studyinfo.fi website. So it's a good idea to go to the study info pages through the, the Tampere University admissions website. So the application form uh, is online and you upload your, your application uh, uh, documents and until 15th of January, you can, you can modify your application. But when the application deadline uh, comes on the 15th, uh, after that, you, you, you're not able to modify your application anymore. So it stays, it stays that way. You are allowed, somebody was asking before, before in the, in the, in the sign up uh, about uh, applying to many different uh, programs or tracks. So you are allowed to, uh, to apply to three different tracks or, or programs at the same time. And you must put them in priority order. And this is something that, that is of course rather difficult. So I think our advice would be that put, put the track or program first, 
which best reflects your own educational background. If your background is in dentistry or history, you have to be very, very careful when applying to, to, to our programs. Especially technology. Yeah. Technology. yeah. So it's, it's always a good idea to, to apply to those programs and to, to those tracks where you are eligible to apply. Mm. So other, otherwise, uh, it's rather it, 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 it's, it's, it's very difficult to, to get admitted mm. if, if you are not eligible for the program. Of course, we also recommend to follow your own interest, but remember. Yeah, that but you have to be you have to be you have to be optimistic, yeah. but you have to be realistic at exactly. the same time. Yes. And then after, uh, in addition to uh, applying online by by fifteenth of January, uh, most of most of you need to send. Uh, the required educational documents by post to Tampere University Admissions Office by 31st of January. And there are country-specific requirements also connected to, to this uh, sending documents by post. So you need to check those carefully. So did we have questions? Uh, perhaps we will answer those questions yeah. in the end. Okay. There are a okay. few slides. Yeah. Let's yeah. run them. Yeah. Yeah. And they are general questions. Yeah. Good questions. We'll yeah, answer good. in a moment. Yeah. So just a few words uh, about tuition fees uh, and, and scholarships. Um, of course, all Finnish universities at the moment are required to, to uh, charge tuition fees. But um, if you have a certain background, no university will in Finland will charge you tuition fees. So if you are if you are an EU EEA citizen or you're equivalent to an EU EEA citizen or you are in practice a citizen of Switzerland, you don't need to pay any tuition fees. And if you already reside in Finland or have an EU blue card issued in Finland, then you don't need to, to pay any tuition fees. Uh, if you need to pay tuition fees, the good news is that we have um, scholarships. Tampere University has, has a scholarship system and uh, those scholarships are available to fee paying students. So if you don't pay any fees, you can't get any scholarship. So paying fees and getting applying for scholarships are scholarships are always uh, linked together. And you apply for the scholarship on the application form for admission. So in your online application, you apply for the scholarship as well. At the same time. Yeah, with, with the same application, for online application form. <clears throat> uh, yep, yeah, there are three types of scholarships. Uh, Thumber University Global Student Award for Academic Excellence Scholarship. That includes 7,000 euros annual scholarship to cover the students' uh, living expenses during the first year, as well as a tuition fee scholarship covering 100% of the tuition fee in a two-year master's degree program. Uh, Tampere University uh, tuition fee scholarship, they cover 100% of the tuition fees in a two-year master's degree program. And uh, even if you don't get any of the above, uh, it's possible to get the early bird scholarship, which covers 50% of the tuition fee during the first year of studies. And that's available to, to all fee paying students. And uh, everybody who gets a scholarship, uh, we, we monitor the progress in studies. So you, you, need, your, you need your studies to, to uh, progress well for, for the scholarship to be renewed. And the link gives you information more information about the detailed information of the scholarships. So even though the 100% waiver says two years, you don't get two years if you don't do anything. During exactly. the, yeah, during the yeah, first year. yeah. That's why we monitor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> monitor so you the need students. To study a certain amount of credits during the first year of studies to earn the waiver also for the second year. What percentage of students are doing enough? 
almost 90. Yeah, uh, 95. Yeah. So it's possible. Yeah, yes. yeah it, it's doable. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's, we we plan the first year of uh, the curriculum in, in such a way, the teaching program in such a way that it's 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 doable. Mm. And students are very well motivated in in in, in during their first year. So the final slide, uh, why Tampere University? Well, the first uh, was this ranked 11th globally was already mentioned in the first slide. So, uh, sorry. So what Tampere University uh, offers you is actually an opportunity to follow study path, well, which of course prepare you to make this leap into the working life, but also uh, you can study quite personal degree. You can rather well follow your own interests uh, for example, when choosing the courses in your major subject, but especially when choosing courses in a possible minor subject or then just some elective studies. So whatever you will study here, you can really choose the courses and effect on the content of your degree. So I think that that is very mm. highly qualified, uh, appreciated thing here in our university, what international students especially have appreciated very much. Of course, we also offer very quality teaching linked to excellent research. There are lots of different research projects going on in our university and uh, students can take part of those research projects during their studies and uh, sort of be qualified also for that kind of uh, work in the future. And I can say that quite many of our interna international students especially have continued their studies here as a PhD student course. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that's true. And uh, the good thing about doctoral studies are uh, in our university is that they are free of charge so mm. there are no tuition fees for for doctoral studies exactly and uh what was, was this was also actually mentioned earlier that uh Dampere is a great hub of industrial activities especially in the it sector and there are lots of companies located here nearby the campus or even on the campus so it's rather easy to contact companies and discuss with them and prepare, for example, some research or project work in a company during your studies. Tampere is, of course, the most student-friendly city in Finland, to be honest, I can say. Um, there are very good student housing possibilities and student events and discounts etc so in addition to study you can also have some kind of other activities uh, during your studies and also relax even even though the studying is the main point but even there are still lots of activities just for relaxing you could have a life here yes exactly <laughs> not just a not study. just not just studies yeah but this is actually now the final slide. You can see the contact details. So uh, if you have any questions of, uh, regarding the application process, uh, application documents, etc., please contact the admission office. You can see the web, uh, their email address over there. Unfortunately, we cannot help you, or we can, or the best place to contact with if you have any questions about regarding this application uh, is the admission office. If you have any questions regarding the contents of these seven tracks, then uh, you can contact me or then Kirsi. Uh, and Kirsi knows everything <laughs> regarding this Master of Science 
programs and if you have any questions regarding the Master of Science in Technology programs or tracks, then please contact me. But I guess now we have some time to uh, answer your questions. There are quite a long list of questions, so I will now scroll here. What was the first questions? We did not yet answer uh, this. So I may not read, read it all, but maybe I read and you answer. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> the first question that we didn't answer is regarding the suitability of, of the background. I'm studying economics and my minor is computer science, so is it possible to apply either software Rebel Cloud MSc or MSc Tech? I have candidate exam BSc in economics. Is that a suitable background for software economics? It purely depends on the content of the bachelor degree. If you have enough studies in uh, computer, uh, computer science, uh, you, it might be possible that you will be admitted to study a Master of Science, of de uh, Master of Science in Technology degree. Uh, what about them? Yeah, but um, I wonder if, if, if you have enough you know, physics, mm. uh, mathematics, Perhaps I recommend you to contact uh, us by email because then it's easier to ask yeah, to ask you yeah. to ask you more questions yeah. because it, it's a, it's also a matter of how, how much computer science you have yeah. taken. Yeah. But I can say that we have been admitted candidates with the uh, with the Bachelor of Science in Economics, but it's really about what is the content of the degree. Then the next question, my IELTS is going to expire on 28th of January, but the deadline is for applications is 15th of January. Should I have to retake my IELTS? That's the language exam. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's mentioned on our website. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Let's see. Uh, just a second. Mm. You can see here the uh, language requirements. Language requirements. Okay. And you uh, can't see it, but I'll read. So on the website, <laughs> tuni.fi study with us how to apply, blah, blah, blah. The language test must be completed at the latest on 15th of January 2020, which is the application deadline. This is all along that's stated. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so I think this is no problem. Yeah. Yeah. He has yeah. taken it. He has taken it. Yeah. It's already going yeah. to expire, but it's not expired at the date yeah. of exactly. the application. Yeah. Yes. So it's okay. It's okay. You don't need to retake. Next question. So what is the difference between the data science track and the statistical data one? The main difference is that data science is based uh, in, in is based in, in, in computer science and uh, the studies uh, the studies are mainly the, the course units that you take are mainly so the offer of course units are mainly the same in data science and statistical data. Uh, data analytics but if you are in data science you take more uh, study modules study units in computer science and less in statistics and the other way around if you are if your if your major is statistical data analytics then you have more studies in uh, statistics and less studies in, in, in computer science trying to maybe Formalize also the third of, of the three tracks, machine learning, how, how that differs from the others. So I would maybe say that the, the data science is computer science version, studying things like data structures, how, what kind of computational platforms and how to use them, Hadoop, Spark, these kind of things, big data, computational platforms and algorithms. Then statistical data analytics is how to use statistics for big data, 
And then the third one is the machine learning, where we are focusing on machine learning methods, including deep learning. For example, on my course, we are currently uh, studying deep learning, which is a hot topic and uh, at attracts a lot of students. But these are the three ones. Differences do exist, but, uh, but uh, they are quite close to each other, nevertheless. Next one. This is from a student who is currently enrolled to our university. <clears throat> is it possible to change the major of the master degree without taking part in the application process? Mm, mm. So this was the applicant in, in economics. Yes, yes. No, it, it's not possible to change, to transfer without joining the, the application round just now because the degree so the target degree is different. So if you are now studying economics, you will have to apply now for the computing sciences, one of the tracks of the computing sciences program. Do you post these slides somewhere? We record this. Yeah. Record this webinar, so this will be posted. So you can see the slides from there. Exactly, yeah. Then, Hi, where geography-wise are most computing science students employed after graduation? Um, I don't know about any percentages. Maybe one half of our students, complete student base, including in our Finnish programs and in the international programs, I would say one half or two thirds, but maybe one half. Uh, stays in Tampere, finds a job in here. Maybe one third goes to Helsinki region, the capital region in Finland, and the uh, rest probably are employed somewhere outside Finland. But there is a lot of variation across the disciplines. Mm, that's true. Mm. But there is a there's many, not the majority, but many students that graduate will get employed in our local region. Computer sciences, maybe information technology, there are much more opportunities in, in, than in some other disciplines. Additionally, it may be too early to ask this, but do you know how tuition fees will be handled for students with UK passports if UK withdraws from both the EU and EEA mm. while enrolled in the degree program? This depends on the uh, future relationship with the between the UK and the EU. So, if there is an agreement on on students being able to to continue in the U, EU, students being able to continue in the e, in the UK it, with in the same terms as as, as as nowadays, then EU will be doing the same thing for you, for the UK students. Mm -hmm. But it's it's true. We don't we don't have any any guidelines mm -hmm. on this. We we have some preliminary things, but they are so preliminary that uh, mm -hmm. I don't think. Yeah, I think that depends on what will be the relationship. Yeah, it depends on the future yeah. relationship. But of course, we try to uh, if the student the student has been admitted the scholarship, uh, or we're not. <laughs> if, sorry, if the student was not required to pay any fees when he or she was admitted like well the uk residents so of course we try to serve him or her that yeah way also yeah if, in the, if the status yeah if the status yeah. changes in the middle of studies yeah so we 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 try to be as flexible as possible yeah. at this end so the, I, I, I'm, I'm 100 percent sure that mm. that uh, no student in such a, a, a situation would have to pay tuition fees mm. because uh, the UK wants to leave European mm. Union. So some sort of uh, some sort of solution will be found. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So we don't know if it will be hard Brexit or not. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be interesting times. Then, how much do you value self-learning in non self-learning non-degree experience? Will you value, for example, go Coursera Stanford machine learning course upon application?
application? What's needed to prove completion? Well, we need to be sure that it's you that actually you have actually that has, yeah. has actually taken that 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 course. And of course, official evaluation is based on your bachelor degree, the yeah. degree you have officially completed. So, of course, this kind of thing sort of shows your motivation. But what uh, is more important is the bachelor degree you have completed. However, that being said. Uh, as I mentioned, comparing applicants from different parts of the world is mm. like comparing apples to oranges. Mm. So if I have, when I'm reading those, when I have mm. an idea that these seem to be, I don't see much difference in between these applications. They all look good and I need to choose one of those. Mm. Then these kind of things do matter. Mm. Although officially it's based on the bachelor, but if the mm. bachelors are equivalent in our Ice. Yeah. then these kind of things help us in doing the eventual decision. Yeah. So they are secondary and helpful in that. Mm. What makes a motivational letter stand out the most to you? Should I answer? I'm reading. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you read a lot of those. <clears throat> yes, what makes a motivational letter stand out? The most you, you should well the intention of motivation letter is to show your motivation why you are interested in this um, good motivation is good it's difficult to stay what other things state what other things that make what are the components for a good motivational letter I can say what is a bad motivation letter a bad motivation letter is looks like a verbatim copy written by mm, somebody else yeah. I, I see them every now and then and, and if it starts by saying that Already when I was a small kid, my father told, to, told to me that I, I should go to study computing sciences in Tampere. That doesn't make sense. It's not, not realistic. It, it's not credible. So it should be both showing your own motivation and be kind of personal to you. So that it's not the same thing that everybody else says. Artificial intelligence is a hot topic, so I want to study machine learning in particular in Tampere. But what makes you motivated? You have been successful in, in, in your bachelor computer science uh, studies. And uh, because of that, you believe that you can also be successful in the, these domains. Also, you have participated in these Coursera courses. That's an excellent mm -hmm. material for motivation letter shows that you have actually done something to reach this course and, and started already the studies. These kind of things that make you stand yeah, out yeah. from the crowd. We are receiving a lot of applications, so it's important to stand yeah, out. So we are actually running challenges. out of time. So actually, we are now uh, running out of time. So we need to end this webinar. But uh, as mentioned, if you have any questions regarding this application process, documents required, etc., please contact the admissions office. They are happy to help you with those things and if you have any questions regarding this or the contents of these different tracks etc please do not hesitate to contact Kirsi or then me uh, we are then happy to answer your questions regarding the content of those, tra those tracks and uh, prerequisites and what kind of bachelor degrees for example we appreciate so please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. But I hope that this uh, webinar was useful <laughs> and uh, gave you an idea how, uh, how these seven tracks differ. And hopefully you will now know the track you will apply to. And we are just now waiting for your applications. Okay, thanks for attending. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you in Tampere. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>
Bye. 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 Kiitos.